My name is Lee Thomason, and I graduated from Christian County High School, and then went on to community college and graduated from there and transferred to Western Kentucky University. While at Western, I served in the ROTC department, went on active duty for four years, and then from there, I left active duty and went into manufacturing, and then moved back here about 15 years ago. I was a business major at Western, and then while on active duty, I went on and got my MBA. As an Army officer, I've served as, uh, uh, in the Armor as Tank Platoon Leader and Executive Officer and also as a company commander. Our company, Facility Service and Management, is a facility management and maintenance and engineering company with emphasis on DOD facilities, mainly in uh, hospitals, research centers, public works. Uh, we provide facility maintenance on all the infrastructure of of uh, government buildings, uh, federal buildings, and even public buildings. Uh, we provide HVAC services as an example, all the electrical services in there, a lot of digital controls, fire protections, elevators, water treatment, uh, whatever it takes to keep a building maintained. Most of our employees are already in place when we take over a contract, but as the, as the workforce begins to age, we're having to recruit uh, through local uh, recruiters or local uh, labor providers, uh, service providers. Uh, and it's becoming increasingly more and more difficult uh, to find labor. Um, we have jobs all the way from Alaska down through California, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, all through the southeast, all the way up in the northeast, and we have the same problem. We have an aging workforce with nobody to take their place. And these are extremely well-paid jobs. You can start out as a general labor in most cases somewhere around $20 an hour and as a skilled labor as an HVAC technician or electronics technician, fire technician, electrician, you can make as much as 30 to $35 an hour depending on what part of the country you're in along with your full paid benefits. So you're looking at coming out making probably sixty to $70,000 as a technician. And it does not require a college education to do that. Or college debt. Or college debt. One learns, there's several ways. One is through on-the-job training. Others are through formal technical school training. Uh, and I would say another is uh, through vocational schools. Um, there are instances where we take young folks that have the right attitude, that are positive, good work ethic, and we'll train them. We'll train them to what we want, especially in some of the specialty trades, uh, such as fire protection. You know, some of those trades you don't learn just coming out of a vocational school. You learn it on the job with, with already licensed, trained technicians. Some of the licensing that, that may be involved is journeyman type licensing. Well, they're not really licensing, they're just certifications. Um, and we'll go back to the fire protection. Most of those folks are taking tests where they're pa passing state exams or state licensing exams. And all it is is testing their knowledge on codes and compliance and how to fix and maintain and service the equipment. A lot of the ways that uh, the folks learn is either online or they can learn on the job or they learn in the classroom. And in most cases, they're doing all three. Each job is, has its own time frame as to when they recognize uh, a certain level of certification. Um, it could be two years, three years, four years, five years. It depends on the, on the trade, and it also depends on what the state requirements are. Uh, each state is different. Uh, some states uh, recognize journeymen. Some states want actual state licensing. And, it, and the more technical uh, the trade is, the more stringent the licensing are, especially when you're dealing with life safety and those types of things in these buildings. For a high school student, trying to figure out where they want to go and how to get there. Um, I would say that guidance counselors are good. I would talk to technical schools to see what kind of opportunities are out there. And just look at what's in the one ads and the type of jobs that are being advertised. And, and, and go talk to those, those industries that are advertising and ask them what the requirements are and what they need to do. You know, you'd be surprised how many companies will say, well, listen, we'll train you. you want to, if you've got a good work ethic, and you, and you want a job, we'll put you to work. And we'll train you, and you will learn. 
Um, you know, a lot of my managers today that are across the United States are not college educated managers. A lot of them work their way up. Uh, and some of them are high level operational managers. So it's, it's not necessary that uh, you have a four year degree in order to operate uh, efficiently and make a good salary and living uh, and comfortable living. Work ethic in, in, in our company, in our line of business um, is extremely critical. Um, some of the facilities that we work in are highly technical. Uh, some of them are hospitals, some of them are research labs. Uh, so they have occupants and, and patients. And so we, I've, I've been told a long time ago, I was taught that maintenance in a hospital begins in the mech rooms and the basements and all the other workings in, inside that facility. And that's where patient safety starts. So it's highly critical that, it, that um, you have a good work ethic you don't shortchange, you don't shortcut, um, you do the best you can, and you work hard. Working for the government has its own set of rules uh, that are different in the federal government than, than they are in, uh, in a commercial setting. Uh, we require drug-free workplace, we require uh, no felonies based on our contracts that we have, uh, so you have to be a, you have to have a clean record uh, and be a clean individual in order to work in some of these federal contracts. And some of the contracts we have, you actually go through background checks, an extensive interview process in order to even work in the facility. Uh, and it's not just a matter of, of, of being drug free or, or no arrest. Uh, it's, it's also personality traits that they're looking for. Uh, if you take, think about it, some of the labs that we work in, they, they, they work with some pretty scary stuff. And, they have to trust the individuals that come in and out of those labs that they're not gonna do something with what they're seeing. Some of the jobs that we do, uh, we do have and contracts we have require uh, security level, higher security level clearances um, along with the background checks that I've previously discussed. Uh, there are some jobs out there that require secret levels. There's some that, that just require just a standard background check. So, as far as doing background checks, I would be very aware of, of social media and how you post things and the way you post things. Um, we don't necessarily go back and look at that when we're interviewing, but it could have a detrimental impact on some of the facilities that we work in if they look at that kind of uh, uh, media uh, and look at that kind of background. So I'd be extremely careful because it's a permanent record and it's never gonna go away of what you post on, on any type of social media. My advice to students that are, that are looking to graduate is that college is not for everybody and it's not, it's not the benchmark of success is, is having a four year degree. In fact, it's just the, in, in most cases, it's just the opposite of that, especially in, in the in the fields that I work in and my company provides services in, we need young people, energetic, that are willing to learn and to, and to get into the trades to, of maintaining. These are very highly sophisticated buildings today and um, we need young, smart folks that want to get into this. And keep in mind, usually technicians it's, it's a job that you go in, you, you, you clock in, you put your tool belt on, go do your job, you clock back out, and you're done for the day. And some of the management roles, it's 24-7. You never stop. And for, for a college degree, having that much debt, it's not worth it. Because it's not there. The labor pool has been, has, all the qualified people have been employed now. And so we, we don't have a labor pool uh, to pick from and to use as a resource to continue the growth uh, and to maintain what we're doing. In fact, we're, we're launching a new business now. We can't find the labor to, labor is limiting us as far as growing that new business because there's nobody in it. Another good resource that we tap into for labor is through the military. A lot of folks, young folks, getting out of the military have come out of there with a skill that we look for. 
One is, is the discipline, and two, depending on what branch of service you go into, some branches do a better job than others of teaching you skills that are translated or, or transferable to, to the civilian world. Um, we have a lot of HVAC technicians, electricians, uh, equipment repair technicians that, that learn their trade in the military. I highly recommend that as a avenue to learn and to grow.